Let's first let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this moment, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for, in th for this time, Lord God, that you have appointed, Lord God. And I commend everything in me <laughs> to you to this time, Lord God. And I thank you that only what you want to be said will be said, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that whatever you want done, Lord God, within this hour will be done, God. And I thank you, Lord God, for hearts, God, that's prepared to receive, Lord God. I thank you for ears that are open, Lord God. We hear what you are saying to the church, Father. And I just thank you, Lord God, that it is so in Jesus' name. Good morning again. Um, so this morning, what I want to talk about uh, is offense. I want to talk about offense um, and to encourage you, whether it be offense to search your heart now to get it out or whether it be future offense, because Jesus said offense will come. It's inevitable. And so this morning, I just want to talk about that. Um, I have been doing a self-evaluation on myself lately, searching my, asking God to search my heart, to deal with me. And um, the Holy Spirit gave me instructions, and he said that I need to purge my heart. I need, to, I need to deal with my heart issues. And so he told me, he said, to write down every offense that I have been holding on to, to write it down on paper. And, and when I was done with it, he, was going, he said to burn it. And I'm like, burn it? Yeah, he said, because God is going to give me beauty for ashes. Uh, so he gave me uh, the scripture, Isaiah 61 and 3. And um, I also remember, I think, last week where he gave us the, scri the scripture as far as becoming uh, the trees of righteousness. But before I even become that tree of righteousness, I had to ex make an exchange. Like I had to exchange these, these ashes for God's beauty that I may become. Be um, can you give me that scripture? Yeah, it says to... Uh, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we, that we might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And so before I become, he said, that it's, there's conditions. He said that we might be called, but before then, we had to make an exchange. So I had to, you had to exchange either beautiful ashes, the oil joy for mourning, or a garment of praise for heaviness. So when I came in the cloud of glory, I had to exchange beauty for ashes. So before I even become that tree of righteousness. And so he began to deal with me. And so I went in my back room, I closed the door, and I, and I, and I obeyed the instructions because I knew that this is the Holy Spirit had to do, had, he was giving me instructions that I may grow because offense hinders us. It really does. So I went back there and I began to write down every offense. And it was painful because some of it, some of it, I didn't even know it was there. So the Holy Spirit had to illuminate what was there. And as he began to tug on it and to pull it up, it was painful. It was as if I was living that offense all over again. But it was so necessary. And so I had to, go, and I, and I kind of pulled back for a, minute, for a minute. The Holy Spirit said, no, keep going. And before I was done, I had 32 offenses. 32 offenses that I was still holding on to. 32 offenses that was hindering my love walk. 32 offenses that was hindering me from ascending into the heel of the Lord. Because he said, I must have clean hands and a pure heart. If I got offense in my heart, then my heart is contaminated. It's not pure. And so it, uh, these offenses hinders us. It hinders our love walk. It hinders our the way we view things, the way we see people. And, it's, it, it, and we must let go of offense. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And so today, I wanna, I'm going to even give you seven ways to deal with offense. Because we must deal with offense. We can't just let it harbor. We can't just let it sit. Because that's when it, that's when it takes root and it hinders our love walk. It hinders our growth, our spiritual growth. Because we can only go so far. Because hinder, the offenses hinders us. We can only go so far. And so I'm going to give you seven ways to deal with it. There are other ways, but I'm just going to give you seven this morning. Okay, one is forgive. Colossians 3, 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. So we must be quick to forgive. And like it, it said, as Christ forgave us, we must forgive. Because guess what? We offended Christ. We have done wrong to Christ. And so just like he forgave us, we must now extend that same grace and mercy that he gave to us. 
we must forgive. In order for us to even be forgive, we must forgive. So be quick to forgive when somebody offends you. Don't hold on to it. The second, avoid gossip and slander. Proverbs 17 and 9. He that covered their transgression seeketh love, but he that repeated a matter separate very friends. And so when we cover the offense, when we cover and not go tell somebody else what somebody else did to us, we're seeking love. And we're supposed to be doing what? Walking in love. So when we cover that offense, we're seeking in love. He said, but if we don't, when we go gossip, we go slander, you know what? We call somebody else to look at that person differently. Because when they see that person, guess what? They're going to think about what you told them. And so and now we're, we're causing separation. And so it's best that when, when we um, are offended, don't be quick to go tell somebody else. Because and then cause what we do is, like I said, cause separation. So when I was so offended, I mean, I was talking more about the fence than anything. And, and, and it, it would call, like, because it was so rooted there that a lot of times, like the word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Whether they're good or bad, whatever's in your heart going to come out. And so I had this offense in my heart where I kept just talking about the offense. I wouldn't get nowhere. You know, and I'm talking to people, you know, and so we don't want to spread gospel or slander because we don't want to call division. Uh, number three, focus on resolving the issue peacefully. Matthew 18 and 15. It said, moreover, if thy brother shall trans tra trespass against thee, go and tell him fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou shalt gain thy brother. So he tells us the very first thing to do, go to the person that offended you. Go to them one-on-one. Because -on -one. a lot of times it's a misunderstanding. But if you, you won't know that if you just hold on to it and don't go to the person that offended you. So the first, go to them one-on-one -on -one and talk to them. And, and, and try to resolve the issue. Then there's more where he said, if, okay, if that don't work, go get somebody in Christ. If somebody in Christ, don't go get somebody in the world. Go get somebody in Christ that will go with you and go back to that person and try to resolve the issue. So there's, uh, we're not going to go further than that, but that might that just give us more steps. But by my, the point of that, just saying, go to the person. Okay, next, overlook the offense. Proverbs 19 and 11. It says, the, the discretion of a man deferred his anger, and it is his glory to pass over transgression. And so we want to overlook offense. Now, now I'm, that is not saying like a big offense, because again, when, when we just read, sometimes you have to go to the person. But there are offenses that will come, but we can overlook. And, and so he says us to overlook that, overlook that sin, uh, overlook that transgression, um, and to defer his anger like, have self-control over that anger. At that moment when they offend you, have enough self-control to overlook that offense. And five, trust in God's defense. So if, if Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which is passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mine through Christ Jesus. So when those offense come, take it to God. Trust him. And so what I, what I didn't do a lot of times, I didn't take it directly to God. I took it to people. I took it, you know, and, but he said to take it to him. And when we keep, we, we trust his defense, his peace will guard our thoughts and our hearts. His peace will guard those from, the, from uh, meditating on those offenses which hits in your heart because that's what the enemy wants us to do. He's going to keep bringing up the fence in your mind. Oh, they did this. Oh, they did that. Oh, they said this. Oh, they said, and guess what? It's going to get in your heart. It's going to take root in your heart. But if we just trust God and take it to him, to, he's, uh, it said, go back to six, please. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. It said everything. That includes offenses. Everything. Take everything to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And when you, when you take it to him, it just thank him in the end that he, he's shielding your heart and your thoughts. He's shielding you. And so um, the next one would be six. You that offense, that offense as a means to grow into the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22. When we are offended, those are, those are opportunities to grow in the fruits of the spirit. Because um, remember, we've been taught that everything is as seed form. 
And so we must cultivate it. So every opportunity where we're faced with offense, that's the opportunity to grow in the fruits of the spirit. We can grow in love. It's a great opportunity to grow in love. This, this love is the way that we're going to even be recognized as his disciples. So we must grow in love. They even said Zion will be known by the way we love. But if we have the offense in our heart, we're not going to really truly walk in this love that he's called us to walk in. We can grow in joy. We can grow in peace, long-suffering, because guess what? Some of these people that offend you, you're going to have to continue to walk with. You're going to have to be long-suffering with. And But what the world say, cross me, I'm cut you off. Like they be so quick, to, but we're of the kingdom. Some people you are ordained to walk with. There are some people, that there's some pain that you are ordained to bear, and you're going to have to be long-suffering. So you're going to have to grow in long suffering when that offense comes. Don't give up. Don't be so quick to give up on people. Don't be so quick to give up on them when they offense you, when they hurt you. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to let it go and grow in love. Be gentle, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance against such there is no law. All of these things, all of these fruits of the spirit, when we are offense of opportunity to grow in it. <laughs> we just have to yield to it. If you have the Holy Spirit, guess what? You have love in you. You have joy in you. You have peace. You have, you have these things. We have what we need on the inside of us. So when we offended, we just have to yield and say, Holy Spirit, help me. And it was time that I did yield, but it wasn't all the time. So sometimes that's why I still had 32 offenses still in my heart. But it was time that I yield to some and yacked to other. But when, in order to grow to the next level, he just began to deal with me. You know, there, there's a purpose in it. And there's a, your ministry and your calling would be healed. I mean, it would be hindered because of offenses. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. You're, there are people, if you don't heal, you don't deal with your offenses that are, that are waiting. It will be held up. During one of the teachings of, of the new class thing, uh, uh, um, Apostle, I'm going to call him Holy Spirit, <laughs> Apostle well, from the Holy Spirit, he said that there's, some, there's people that will go to hell if we don't get it right. Boy, that hurt my heart. I don't want nobody to go to hell because I won't get it right. So, y'all, it, it's so important to search your heart. Just like he, she just revealed in the vision, he's going to begin to search it. But when he bring it up, be obedient to let it go. And some things, it may look crazy. He told me to burn the paper. But he was going to give me beautiful ashes. But guess what? J he, the man came to Jesus. I want to see. He spit on the ground and made mud. He told the people of Jericho to walk around the wall seven times, then shout. They're going to be screaming. It may seem strange to us, but do it. He told maybe, hey, go dip seven times in Jordan, and then you're going to be clean. It's going to look it's gonna look different. But don't let your carnal mind stop you from receiving and doing what it is the Holy Spirit telling you to do. Because he's going to search your heart. Because you don't want to be hindered. <laughs> you don't want to be hindered. And then last, uh, seven. Focus on the need of the, of, of the other. 1 Corinthians 13 and 5. Do, do not behave yourself unseemly. Seek not her own. It's talking about love here. Uh, it's not easy to provoke, think of no evil. So when we're walking in love, we're not seeking. Uh, we seek not our own. So in that time of offense, don't seek to save yourself. Don't seek to shield. Like Give that to God, but also ask God, why did this person do this? So sometimes we don't see the root of it. Ask them, why this person do this? Because sometimes we see the outer expression of it. But this person can be hurt too. Even the world say hurt people hurt people. So we have to have enough love to say, God, show me. What's wrong? Is it a demon in operation? Have this person been uh, wounded in their childhood? Because there's an outer manifestation of what's going on the inside. And we have to have enough love to not seek our own to ask God, why did this person do this? What's going on with them? And pray about it. Pray about it. Don't let, don't let be so hurt that you can't pray for them. Then you're in, you're in the wrong. Have enough love to not seek your own, but seek the love of another to, to cover them, to help them, to pray for them, that they will overcome what it is they're dealing with. And I know some offense is going to be hard because the closer the relationship, the deeper the hurt, the deeper the wound. But you still got to let it go. I know it's your mother, I know it's your father, I know it's your wife, your husband, your brother, you still got to let it go. And it, those are the ones you got to actually be quick to let go because they're so close, which means their wound going to be hurt even deeper, but you still got to let it go. 
you still got to let it go. And the enemy going to use those. Because you know what? He, if a complete stranger come in and offend you, yeah, you may be mad, but it ain't going to take that root as if it was somebody close to you. And so he said, no matter what it is, you got to let it go. So I encourage you this morning to search your heart, whether it be offense that's there now or future offense. So because, again, Jesus said it's inevitable. It will come. Offense will come. So search your heart. I encourage you to search your heart. Search your heart. If there's nothing there, good. If, and if your future offense, deal with it. Remember what Father has said on today. It's how to deal with those offenses. Amen. Good afternoon. Let us begin. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. As I yield to the Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask that these words do not fall on deaf ear, Lord, and let them they hear, hear, Lord, and let them receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I want to talk to you guys about two topics, which are one and the same. They go hand in hand. The first part I want to talk about is commitment. The second part I want to talk about is submission. So when we commit, we commit from our hearts. We commit because that's something that we take pride in. Like even when we start committing as a young age, when we commit ourselves to school, when we go to class, we commit to doing our homework to make a better grade. We commit to showing up on time so we could get an education, correct? So while we are committing, we are doing these things in life. And while we're in elementary school, we go on through high school. We still commit because we want to graduate and be able to go to college or just whatever God leads you to in that thing. But you still commit to something. You are you're committing to someone in life, even when you're on the job, you commit to doing what they ask you to do. That's committing. You commit to showing up on time. You commit to whatever their policies are when they're asking you to commit to be able to come to this job, to be able to get the job done. You're committing yourself. You're putting all that you have inside you. That's part of your commitment to whatever you want to be committed to. So we do these things, even when you're in college, you know, you commit to sororities and glee clubs and, you know, fraternities and stuff. So you commit all your life to something. You have to commit to something to be able to participate in it. So when you're committing, you're committing from the heart. You're committing because you want to do it. No one is making you commit. So through all these things that I'm speaking of about commitment, commitment is something that we know that we have to do daily. So as we commit ourselves daily, we're going to commit to things that we need to grow, things that we need to be able to move forward, things that we need that's going to really help us get throughout the day, throughout life. Commitment is very valuable. It's a valuable tool. It's a valuable thing to have. Commitment is something that, you know, that you have to put in the work. Like they say, put in work. You really have to put in work in everyday life. You have to put in work even with God. You have to commit to God. You know, when I came into this ministry, apostles just didn't say, well, hey, welcome to Zion and sit down. You know, he asked me. What do you want to commit to? And what I committed to was the Lord. But I also had to commit to his rules, to the core values, to Hebrews 12, 22 through 24, to Isaiah 59, 16. I had to commit to these things. I had to commit to classes that I was taught, numerous of classes. I had to commit to modules. 
I had to commit to understanding not just what was taught of me, but getting it inside my soul. Because my spirit is fine, but my soul is the progress. And, though, and without that commitment to the Lord to be able to save my soul, I still won't make it into the kingdom. Because there's things that's rooted in your soul that you have to commit to getting rid of. Amen? You have to commit to God's hand upon his authority. So when I became a member of Zion, those things was asked of me to commit myself, my time, my family, and everything that I believe in when it comes to commitment. Commitment is key. It is vital. It is important. And it is important to God because he committed his son to us. He committed his son to us when his son died on the cross and he shed his blood. That was his commitment to us. That was his love that he gave to us. So we got to commit ourselves daily. We got to pick up our cross and carry it daily. We got to commit to something greater than ourselves. So while you are committing in your, your walk with the Lord, commit to picking up the Bible. Commit to praying. Commit to following instructions. Commit to these things that are really not hard to do. These are not things that um, they just want to ask us to do because they don't have anything to give us. These are instructions that we are asked to follow, but we can't follow unless we commit first. Nothing's going to move in our life with God unless we commit first. We have to commit. So when my um, spiritual father, my pastor, asked me to commit, I took on the challenge. I committed. Countless hours. I committed to correction. That's a part of your commitment. You know, we don't like to talk about that part because, you know, really no one likes to be corrected. You know, we get in this age, we think we're grown and can't no one tell us nothing but our parents. You know what I'm saying? But there's our spiritual father right there. Correction. The Holy Spirit gives us correction when we error. We act like we don't hear, but we hear. We hear him very well, but he gives on correction. And guess what? Someone else sitting next to you can't correct you. Whether it's a child, whether it's mother, sister, brother, niece, nephew, we all have to commit. Commitment is key. You know, I'm giving you a few little examples. Like Daniel, you know, Daniel, he committed and, you know, he was so sincere and he was steadfast that he could deliver himself from his own righteousness. That's commitment. Abraham, he committed, you know, he committed to find a wife for his own child, you know, because he knew that God had promised a multiply of his descendants. So he committed to that. Abraham told his servant to go out to the country and his relatives instead of finding a wife for the Canaanites. He committed. He, he put himself out there. Jeremiah, another good person who committed. Jeremiah continued to preach and to prophesy in the Lord's name. Even in the hard times, he committed. He found commitment in what he was doing. And, you know, um, Abraham was just committed to God's commandments. And it went, even when it meant sacrificing his his long-awaited son, he still committed himself. Commitment is key. Even the apostle Paul committed. He showed himself to be one of the greatest examples of commitment in the scriptures of maintaining the pattern of the gospel given to himself by inspiration. That was his commitment. Let me give you a couple examples of committing yourself to God so we will know how to commit and what to commit. Because sometimes we 
I don't want to tell you guys about committing and not give you examples of how to commit. I think that's something that the Holy Spirit really wants you to know is how to commit. First of all, prayer, daily prayer. Make it a priority, like our spiritual father said, like our apostle said, pray daily. Reason why prayer is important, that's the source of our strength. Prayer. Prayer, commit yourself to the Lord. Prayer daily. Pray throughout the day. Don't pick one day when you wake up or before you go to sleep. Pray daily. Keep them on your mind. That's committing yourself to the Lord. The second one is something that should come natural. It comes natural to me, and I like to do it, serving others. That's committing yourself to God. That's committing yourself upon the God's hand, upon his authority, upon the, the authority of our apostle and our pastor and what everything Zion stands for. We are a ministry of servitude. We are a ministry of servitude. Serving is key. Amen. The next one is tithing regularly. Countless of times that we are asked to tithe and to give from our heart. But understand this. In order to commit yourself to God and get what you want from him, that requires giving what he acts of you. It's all reciprocated back to what he's asking you to do. He's asking you for 10%. Not just 10%. He's asking you for just offerings as well. Give from your heart. Give not just to the church. Give to the, the head. Give from your heart. And then he will commit to giving you what you ask for out of the abundance of your heart. The next one is sharing your faith. You know, we always talk about how good God is, but where's the faith? Share it with others. Tell people your testimony of how you overcame something. That's commitment. That's what God asking us for, something simple like sharing your faith with others. Telling people how good he is. Tell them what he done for you. Step out there on faith and tell another. Don't just bother the end and keeping it to yourself. You know, that's not committing yourself to God. You have to commit these things to God because it's, it's, it's very vital. Everything that I'm saying to you, vital. If you don't remember it, ask for the video. Go over it again. This is vital information. The next one. It's attending a religious gathering. That's what we always want to do. Come to church. Come to deliverance class. Come on Saturdays. Do the things that are required that our leaders ask us to do. Because whatever they're asking us to do, God has asked, asked through them. So we are committed to coming to gatherings. Now, I know things might happen, and you know you can't make it, but commit yourself if you can. Don't just be like, okay, I missed this day. I guess I can miss another. No, if you know you can really get up and make it, come. Come. Be there. That's a part of your commitment. You signed up for that. You said you wanted to be a leader. No one forced this upon you. No one forced you. To, to to not come and say, stay at home and wall in your problems. That's not the Lord. That's the enemy. It's all a trick of the enemy. Amen? The next one that I like a lot, and I know a lot of us do, volunteer. Volunteer for a charity or something. Volunteer to feed the homeless. That's committing. Our church is big on that. Amen? We've done that plenty of times. That's volunteering. That's your commitment as well. That's another form of committing yourself to God. You know, committing yourself also requires that when your apostle call, answering your phone. Not ignoring them. Not ignoring the pastor. Not ignoring the things that are important. Not listening. 
when we have instruction. That's a part of our commitment. Commitment is key. Commitment is everything that you put your heart and soul in to honor God. That's your commitment to Christ. That's what we have been instructed. There are the things that we know that the Lord really wants us to do is commit ourselves. Commitment is key. Let's bring up um, a few examples of that. Turn to Proverbs 16.3. Amen. Let me give you a couple of scriptures on commitment. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. In other words, commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Whatever plan you have, it'll be rooted. It'll be established because you committed yourself to the Lord. So his word is not going to fail. He said it, it, it'll be established. So whatever plans you got, include him in the plan. That's where your plan will go through. If not, it's going to be a faulty plan. You won't have a plan. Your plan will be ruined. And some of us will be like, man, I had a plan, but everything just didn't go right. Well, you didn't commit. You didn't do what you was asked to do. You didn't commit. I didn't make that up. He said you didn't commit. That's why it wasn't established. Your plan failed. Ask Satan. He know about failing. You didn't commit. Turn to Psalms 37.5. Give you another example of how commitment is very vital. Amen. Psalm 37 said, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That means commit your, your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will what? Act on it. Amen. He will act on it. It will come to pass, meaning he will act on it. So if you commit, expect the action. He'll act on it. He'll say, okay, you committed yourself to me, I'm going to put forth this action. Gotcha. Gotcha, saint. You want to be a minister? Commit. You want to be the best leader? Commit. You want to be the best servant? Commit. And he going to act on it. He going to make sure you do what you have to do. You will be in the place where you need to be when it's time for you to get the glory. Act on it. Another one. Romans 2 and 6. It says, who will render to every man according to to his deeds. In another sense, God will repay each person according to what they have done. Now, this is something I like. Because we were always told this. And this is true. If you put in less, you receive less. If you put in more, you receive more. That's increase. Like they say, no work, no eat. You don't put in the work, you ain't going to receive anything. If you don't commit to his deeds, you're not going to receive what he has for you because you're committing to your deeds. Your deeds is not valuable. Your deeds don't hold weight in the kingdom. His deeds hold weight. When we stop acting like what we do matters and just really start committing and understanding that it's the kingdom ways and not our ways, a lot of things will change for you. Amen. Let's go to Colossians 3.23. Colossians 3.23 says, And whosoever ye do, do it heartily, and as the Lord, and not unto men, 
In other words, whatever you do, work at it with your heart and working with the Lord, not for your human master. In other words, what that's saying is put your heart into what you're doing for the Lord. Do it for the Lord, not for man. Do whatever you're doing, commit for the Lord. Don't commit for man because the Bible said man will fail you. He will fail you. He will disappoint you. He will upset you. He, nothing but the Lord. Him first. Through all things, Jesus first. Let's turn to the last one. Ruth 1, 16 through 17. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. In other words, a verse about relationships that describes how partners should support each other. We should support each other in the kingdom. Our, our leaders, again, both of them, spiritual fathers, spiritual moms, always stress the importance about helping each other, uplifting each other, encouraging each other, not inciting each other, but being there for one another, calling each other, pulling on the love. When you see someone going through, be there for them, help them. Amen? These are instructions. So after we had went through some of the key things of commitment, like with Abraham, Abraham committed to whatever God asked him for. Moses committed to just the hand of God in doing everything he asked him to, even when the plagues came. He committed to going forth and in Jesus' name, asking Pharaoh to let his people go. He committed himself to going into that temple and not having the fear of man, but the fear of the Lord, and he committed himself. Now, that brings me to submission, committing yourself. Back from what Moses was doing. Moses submitted himself to getting the people out of Egypt. Submission is key. Submission is vital. Submission is the acknowledging of your ownership, giving up personal rights, and obeying him without reservation. When you commit yourself, you submit yourself. How I submitted myself after I committed myself? Glad you asked. I submitted myself to when he ordained me. I submitted to his authority and what he represented and to the church. I, was, I, I, I submitted to what God had for me to do as an evangelist to go out there and grasp the people, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. I submitted myself. You got to submit yourself upon the authority. The Bible said, Ephesians 5.21, submit yourselves to one another in the reference of Jesus Christ. Amen. Submit. Do you know we have to submit to one another? It doesn't matter who's the oldest, who's been at Zion the longest, or anything. We have to submit to one another. I'm in this house. Great example. Glad you asked. I, I only do I not submit just to them two. I submit to the elders. Amen? You, you ask them why. I'll tell you why. Because... They're in the house. When they're absent, they're present. So they're over whatever the instructions are. It doesn't matter about, hey, you're a minister or this. No, it's submission. When you are submitted, you are committed. And guess what? I happily submit myself. Because I don't want to destroy or burden or be a distraction of what God has for us. So if you don't submit, 
you will have problems. You will be a distraction. You will be everything that Satan needs you to be because at this point, he's using you. So you have to submit yourself. And guess what? When you honor people, you submit to authority anyway without no problem. There's nothing wrong with submitting to one another because that's the way the body works in Christ Jesus. We're going to have to submit to somebody. You submit to your bosses. You submit to your husbands, your wives. You submit and commit to your kids. But let me tell you something about that. We submit to the Lord. You know the reason why the Lord don't submit to us? Anybody? Because we ain't sin. Lord, God is above us, not up under us. He don't have to submit to us. We submit to him. That's the submission that we do when you submit to everything that God has for you. You submit to what the rules are, the regulations are, the teachings are. You submit, and you submit gracefully. That's what submission is about. Submission is anything that you're willing to give up, sacrifice. You submit to the Holy Spirit. Every time you come in here and you pray and you bow down, you submit yourself to the Lord. Before I start teaching or praying, I always yield to the Holy Spirit. Yielding is submission. Yielding is submission. You got to submit to everything you do in the walk of Jesus Christ. You got to submit to not watching TV and being in sin all the time. You got to submit to cleansing. You got to submit to being righteous and going over this word daily and putting it in you and getting the junk and the filth out of you. You got to submit to what the apostle said when that we're sitting up here being programmed by the enemy to think the world is fun out there. That's no fun out there. Think about this. The enemy, he's so strategic. He make things and tell you it's fun, but you got to pay to kill yourself. You got to go to the club, pay to drink. You got to pay to get in there and watch a bat. Think about it. You going in there, but he, you got to pay to watch your own life. You got to pay to, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay. He make you pay for everything. He making you pay to die. And when you die, sometimes you broke. But you spend all that money in the club, thousands, countless of dollars. But he leaves you with absolutely nothing. And guess what we wake up and say the next morning? Man, we had a good time. <laughs> Man, we had a time. Boy, it was lit. Think about that. Still sick. Growing up, headache, but we call it a good time. Not knowing that the enemy didn't put that hurt locker on our liver, on our lungs from smoking. You know, you pay for everything. He pay for sex. They, you paying but to kill yourself. The wages of sin is death. Wages. That's the key. You paying for it. You paying, paying to sin, paying to die, paying to be in hell eternity. Think about it. You done paid your way to hell. That's another way to put it. The root of all evil is money. Paying your way to sin. Paying your way to be forgetting about it. Paying, paying your way out the book of life. That's why submission is key. If you submit to the word, if you submit to when they're teaching us and praying over us and, and countless hours with us and long suffering, think about that. We have relatives that ain't never done that. Our mama be sitting right there. 
like they'll be watching you crying and hurting and pain. But they say, I don't know what to do for you. You on your own. I ain't never heard that from my leaders. Ain't no, I don't know what to do for you. They say, hey, man, look at here. I, I love you. How can I serve you? How can I help you? How can we get over this thing together? Mama be sitting over there with that fan. Hmm. A hot mess. Get on the phone and talk about you in your face. That's why it's important to submit yourself to the Lord. That's why it is key to submit yourself to a higher authority. It's okay. I promise you. Look at me. I'm happier than I ever been. Because I submitted, I committed, and I submitted. Submission is everything. I submitted myself to the military. Chin four, Roger Doggers, Roger Doggers. We signed up. We committed ourselves to all their values, to the government. We, su we submitted to going to war. We submitted to jumping out of plane. We submitted to picking up our rifles, learning everything that we need to learn. And absolutely learned nothing. Not more than I ever learned that Zion. Nothing compares to what I learned here. Nothing compares to what I learned about the Lord. Nothing, absolutely nothing, because I committed and I submitted. I committed and I submitted. Those are the things that keep me pr pressing on, pushing on, even when, I'm, even when I make a mistake, it's fine. Call my spirit today, hey, where I messed up at? Point it out. Ooh, got you. I could now commit to doing what he wanted me to do, and I submitted to listening to how to do it. It starts with yourself. You got to commit to yourself first. Commit to God. Commit to his hand, his hand and his authority, his strength, his righteousness for his name's sake, his love for us. Don't commit to sin. Don't commit to not caring and and thinking that the world is coming to an end, and the enemy got you thinking it's so much fun out there when it's really not. Submit. Give you some more things about this submission, because I love submitting. You know, I'm going to give you a couple of things like I did the commitment on how to submit. Like, again, starting out with prayer. But on this one, you seek God's forgiveness, his wisdom, and his guidance throughout the day. You know, you seek it. The, the Bible said, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. Seek it. Seek God and all his righteousness and all these things to be added to you. Seek. Seek. When we was in the military, we, we seek and destroy. Same concept applies to ministry. Seek and destroy the enemy. Seek and destroy the things that's not of God. But seek God's righteousness. Seek his favor. Seek his love. Seek his strength. Seek, seek his mercy. Seek everything that he has for you. You can't become who you are unless you fully submit. You cannot be who God wants you to be unless you submit. You have to submit. Submission is what God has for you. Because his love is in that submission. His love is what brought out everything out of me that was not good in my soul. I had to get it out. Talking about the margin. Everything out of my soul that uprooted out of my soul. And I put what's righteous, what's God's word in my soul. I submitted myself, y'all. And you you have the power to do it. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy play on your mind with the submission of Christ. Don't let him tell you that the streets, your job, and everything is more important than him first. He comes first. Everything else is bottom line. Bottom line. Another one is read the Bible. You know, I know Lita Michelle says she loves to read the Bible. Love to read the Bible. Read the Bible. 
Bible is, is good. The Bible is the best book you can ever read in your life. There's no, no book like the Bible. There's no word, no life. It's so much fruit and life in that Bible. It's so much water and it quenches your thirst. It quenches your thirst for the knowledge of God that's in that Bible. Read the Bible. The Bible has everything you, every story, everything you ever seen, there's a story that matches in the Bible. Even better. The next one is be content. Be content with what you have and you don't need the approval for others. Thank you all that submitted to Christ. Whatever anybody else think don't matter. What they're talking about, it don't matter. Thank you all that submitted. Only person that matters to is God. He's the one now. He's in charge. He's running the show. You know, you want to get up in there and be like, like a, a prophet said, you, you want to be greeted. You want to have that crown, the, that robe and everything waiting on you. Because that's the only thing that matters. After you commit to God, man, nothing else should matter. Because all the foolishness is gone. You committed to signing up, getting delivered, getting set free from all your sins. You submitted to accepting Christ as your Savior. Not man. Not money. But Jesus Christ. That's a mission. That's the thing that we live for. That's the thing that, you know, I, I just, I, I, I love it now. I love it more than ever because I know what it took, how it took, and I committed and submitted myself. Amen? The next one is worship. Yeah, the king always talking about what you put in your ears, your eyes, your ear gate. Worship music. You get some Christian music, some worship music. However, that, you know, if you want to listen to Romans Bible study or Spotify or whatever, put something in there. Hey, get worship. Get in front of the Lord and praise and worship. That's how you submit yourself back to the Father. That's how you continually submit and commit. Get in that word. Get that music going. Get that praise going. Get that celebration going. Get that hand going. Submit. And one of the things they always tell us to do, both of our leaders, I love them so much, humble ourselves. Once you humble yourself, you cut out all the vain stuff. You cut out everything that you thought the enemy could tell you what not to do. When you humble yourself, you just submitted yourself to the almighty hand. The Almighty Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's no greater, no greater cloak of humility. No greater way but to humble yourself before the Lord. That cuts out every detail, everything that the enemy had planned for you to fail. When you humble yourself before the Lord, that's it. You have the victory. You have God's real reality. He takes the wool off your eyes that the enemy always like to do smoke and mirrors. He removes it. Humbling yourself removes a lot of damage, and it saves you a lot of time, to be honest with you. It saves you a lot of um, strife, a lot of anger that you really shouldn't even have in you. Because if you had to humble yourself, like Lita Kara said, before you got, you know, all all upset, if you just humble yourself first, you wouldn't have got that far. You wouldn't have been all into being angry and being upset at your sister or your brother because you got offended. If you humble yourself before the Lord and not take their offense, then you'll be in a better place. Because we all have things that we have worked on. We all have things that we have to do. But these are, like I said, these are 
what the Lord wanted me to share with you guys that I know is important because I've went through it. I can tell you from personal account countless times. But it was just this. Just love. This righteousness, this favor on us, this grace, it gets us through. Committing yourself and submitting yourself. Committing and submitting to the Lord. And everything else comes down the line like we just talked. The Lord first, then man, then wife, and, you know, so forth. But him first. Keep him first. You can't do nothing. I mean, nothing. Demons won't even listen to you. If you ain't submitted, if you ain't committed to the Lord, you can't. You have no power. If you're not picking, picking up these books, if you're not in your word, if you're not praying, you have no power. You are powerless. Therefore, you are defeated. Submission and committing. James 4, 4 7 through 10 is a, is, is a good way. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Number eight, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded person. Submit. Number nine, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Amen? Submit. Last but not least, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Submit. Submit. Listen to the instructions. Submit. Not just the instructions of the book, the Ten Commandments. Those are vital instructions. We ain't even listening to them. If we can't listen to those ten simple instructions, and commit and submit, how are we going to commit our, and submit to anything else above that? You're out of order. You're wrong. Submit to God. Commit to God first. And submit to a higher authority that's greater than yourself. We know the scriptures. We got it in, this, in our hearts. We know how to submit to one another. You submit to your neighbor when you want something. You submit to your mom when you want some money or, or your dad. You know how to submit. You know how to be submissive when you need them bills covered to next month. You know how to call them and just be talking just as nice. But get to church and talk to your brother and sister like you ain't never talked to nobody rough ever. But you won't submit to them, but you want to submit to the world. No. That ain't kingdom. That's not God's way. We have to commit. We have to commit and put in work. Remember what they even put in work. I put in work when I was in the game. I'm putting in work for God. I care less about a game. Don't come to me. Don't even ask me what game I was in. I don't even want to talk about that. That was the money. That was a past I never want to remember. Never. But I do want to remember the way I walked through those, those assignments and I got set free. The way I was treated, the love, the honor, the unconditional and long suffering, the counseling, all the things that it took and not giving up on me. That's what I want to remember. When we say leave a legacy, my legacy, I want to leave a godly legacy. 
of not what I've said to you guys, of how I influenced you guys, of how I brought the people in, and I came up against principalities. And I love unconditionally. That's the heart of God. Love. First commandment. These are the things that we are required to do. Guess what type of legacy you want to leave when you say leave a legacy. Leave something that a person could really remember you by. Hey, that was a godly man. That was a godly woman. They truly believed in the Lord. They stood for everything. By a matter of fact, you know that church they went to? Side. Man, they warriors there. Man, I ain't seen no other church like it. I mean, that's what they say in the hell now. Let them say the same thing on earth. You know, say you so scared of us. The more you pray, the more power. The more you pray, the more power. Say you so scared of us, he counts his own assignment sometimes. <laughs> God, he know we be in here praying as a corporate. He, he look at all them demons. I catch them by assignment. You know what I'm saying? He, he counts his own assignment. That's fear. That's fear of the Lord. That's what he do. He, he send them people, he send demons to come at us because he's too scared to face us himself. He know they're going to fail. They be coming back limping, black eyes, neck broke. Man, you must have went up there to Zion messing with them saints. <laughs> be us above, be beat all up. Be trying to tell Satan, don't you go up there. Messing with them people. Especially when the women of Zion get together. They be like, you better watch out. <laughs> Amen. That's the type of legacy you want to leave. That's the heart of God. That's what it is. You know how you say you're proud of something? You're proud of your kid, proud of, I'm proud of my ministry as well. I'm proud of my leaders. All of you guys. I'm proud of my constituents. <laughs> you know, I'm proud. I'm proud to be a member of Zion. I'm proud that I got my life saved. I'm proud that I, I, I could serve the Lord with my head up high and won't falter. You want to kill me for the Lord? Go ahead. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to die for the Lord. Anytime. He died for me. He died for you. He died for all of us. Because he loved each and every one of us. We're special. That's what the teachers was taught. We was taught to know we're special and we're loved. You know, I never got that at another ministry. Not to knock them. But let's be honest here. My personal, me, I never was taught that. I was taught the religious stuff. Make it there for devotion. Sit there and go with the program. Whatever they say, that's it. They don't ask. You got something to say? Raise your hand. You got any questions? They don't, they don't do that. But at Zion, our leaders take our time to answer our questions. Because they love us. And they really want us to get it. They want us to commit and submit ourselves. Not to them, but a higher power. Unselfless. That's the type of leadership. That's the type of church. That's the type of people you want to be around. Be glad to walk in through these doors. Be excited. Because guess what? You never know what's going to happen. That's the key. Of sign. Not this routine. Not the routine. We go in the, we think we coming to teaching today. We go right in the prayer. We think we come in to pray today. 
go right into deliverance. You going right into something <laughs> when you come inside. You going right into something, but guess what? You're leaving out victorious. You leaving out victorious. They ain't going to let you walk out that door unless there's a victory on your back. That's the love. That's the commitment. That's the power. That's the resources that we have here at Sion. But that's the heart of God. Think about it. All of this is not what we was taught was in God's heart. Everything he gave to these two, he, they gave it to us. No one ever gave me a present like that. No one. By matter of fact, no one in my family gave me a present since I was eight years old. When I came to Zion, I got plenty of presents, plenty of gifts. I use them, I share them, I cherish them. They're treasures. We got a national treasure here. We got two gifts, beautiful gifts, with all y'all beautiful gifts. And we're gifted. We're more than conquerors. We're gifted. We're militant triumphant. Because we committed and we submitted. We committed and we submitted. We're not failures. We didn't do anything but come to the right place that God wanted us to be at. And look what he has done for us. He has not failed us. He got up out of our sick bed. He cleansed us. He washed us with his blood. He sacrificed day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. And you didn't have to go to a place. We got great music here. Great music. Great sound to me. And you didn't have to pay. And guess what? It feeds life. It's not taking death. It's not, you're not dying slow. Like the world is killing us slow. Killing us with all this unfruitful stuff. Submission. Committing. 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 Yourself to God. It's what we have as Zion. It's what we are always taught to do. Love each other. Love ourselves. Knowing what you can do, you can overcome it. The teachers that we have, you guys are so valuable. They're to our life. There's nothing that ever being taught, whether it's from Apostle or Pastor Tasha or from one of us, that doesn't mean something that we can't grasp on. If we listen more to each other's teaching, like we listen to the world, we'll get something. Because all of us have something to say. And that's the key that I've looked forward to. Everyone having something to say. Because whatever everyone has something to say, it's God speaking. It's God using them. It's God's word going forth through out of their mouths. So listen and take what value is. Commit yourself to listening to one another. Submit yourself to sitting down and paying attention. They're my actions. They're my actions. Like they say, you listen to what you listen to. You commit to what you want to commit. Why oh, you can't do that for the Lord? How hard is that? How hard is that? We've been taught to do this. We've been taught everything that, I'm, I'm going to tell you how good God love is. I've overcome the fear of letting the, your, the Lord use me. I don't go on a tangent and write down what I'm going to say anymore. 
I don't Google research and no. I yield to the Holy Spirit. I submit to the Lord. And just let the Holy Spirit lead me. I point out key things that I think in the Bible that I could use for my life. But my spiritual father influenced me to be all I could be. I've watched a mimic. I saw his inspiration. And guess what I see? God, I want that. God, I want that. I submitted and committed myself. Because I couldn't get that unless I committed and submitted myself to be like my spiritual father, to be like my spiritual mother, to be the best version of me. You have to commit. You have to submit. That's the only way things will change for you. If you're looking for God to do magnificent, wonderful, valuable things, do these key actions. And do it with honor and integrity. Do it with your eyes open wide going into this thing. Do it with your heart being ready to press in when it's time to press in. That's how we defeat every aspect of the enemy. You can't win if you don't try. You can't succeed if you got failure on your mind. You will never be who you call to be if you let the enemy oppress you. If you let him just tell you, you are not, you are not, you are not. I'm telling you what you're not. You're not what he say you are. You're what the Lord say you are. Because he already has you ordained to be whoever you are ordained to be. And I want to leave you guys with this. Whatever you commit and you submit yourself to that's not of God will be your portion. Will be your portion. That is the one that's going to hold you back. That's going to hold you back. But whatever you submit and commit yourself to up under the hand of God, he will get behind that and he will usher it along in your life. He will uplift you. He will grace you. So commit and submit yourself one to another. Commit and yourself commit yourself to God's word. Submit and you commit yourself to his glory. And furthermore, commit and submit yourself daily. Amen.